Napoli booked to place in this year's Coppa Italia final after a 1-1 draw at home against Inter was enough to see them go through 2-1 in aggregate. Good game this. Christian Eriksen scored early from a corner, Ospina making the mistake in goal, but he made up for it. A couple of key saves, also a great assist which eventually led to the goal in Signe, playing into Dries Mertens who made it 1-1 just before the break. Inter had their best chance, Eriksen saw his shot saved by Ospina late on, so it is Napoli who advance. Gab Marcotti with me to reflect on this game. Compared to yesterday, Gab, which was a bit of a well, disappointment, this was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I mean, you know, as the saying goes, a, a goal will go and, and, and open up a game. I think it also helped that, um, you know, Inter, who, who obviously needed to score, didn't have their centre forward uh, sent off foolishly after 17 minutes. Um, I think that was a big part of it. But, um, but yeah, the, the, we saw the game plan early on. Uh, Napoli, one goal up from the first leg, so they, they, they set up to soak up pressure, to hit on the break uh, initially. And then in the second half, they, you know, they sent on Fabian Ruiz, um, and, uh, and they got a little more involved. I thought Inter, I mean, Antonio Conte made this point after the game, they created the better chances, but Ospina, apart from the horrendous uh, blunder uh, on the goal, had a, had a really good game. I think Lautaro and Lukaku probably not as sharp uh, as they were, you know, earlier in the season. But overall, um, I thought Inter the better side. Ospina, very much the difference between the two teams overall. You mentioned Lautaro Martinez, who we've spent years, it feels like, talking about a move to Barcelona. Lukaku as well. That was kind of key today. Ospina did make those two big saves. But apart from that, he wasn't really troubled too much, particularly from those two. Yeah, I mean, Inter did get the ball into the into the final third. I, I, I thought, you know, Eriksen, um, who, who played, I think, for the first time really under Conte, you know, very much starting a game uh, in the hole. Conte pains afterwards to say, look, it was a 3-4-1-2 system. And, and you can blame Eriksen, if you like, for the goal that, that, that Inter conceded with, uh, uh, with Insigne basically, you know, running right past him off of, uh, off of Ospina's reset. Um, but, but I thought, you know, Ericsson, uh, turned on the light and certainly Inter dominated the midfield in the first half. In the second half, after Ruiz came on, I, I think that changed the balance a little bit. Uh, players also got tired. Um, but look, I mean, in the end, uh, Napoli had their game plan. They stuck to it. They executed well. And they got a tremendous performance, I thought, at the back uh, from the two center halves, Maximovic and, as ever, once again, Koulibaly. Not much time for them now to prepare for the final, which is, of course, midweek against Juventus in Rome. Yeah, and look, I mean, people on paper, people who don't pay too close attention will say, oh, well, you know, Juve got this on the back, in, in the bag because they always win. Well, I think there's a slightly different feeling about this. One thing that, that we've seen just over these two games, but we've seen it a little bit in other leagues too, is that um, a lot of times it's, it, it's the lighter, smaller, more agile players who, who get into match fitness quicker. And uh, certainly at Napoli with the likes of, of Dries Mertens. And by the way, we haven't mentioned this. We should mention it. He is now Napoli's all-time leading goal scorer and, and is, uh, is likely to put pen to paper on the contract he's agreed to stick around, which gives everybody a boost. Um, but, you know, with Mertens, with, with Insigne, uh, with Callejon, uh, they have more of those types of, of high-quality um, uh, players who, you know, it only takes them a, a couple chances to go and, and create a goal-scoring opportunity. So I think in some ways, if Gattuso sets up the same way, the onus is going to be on Juve. And as we saw uh, against Milan, you know, Juve have major issues, I think, in the middle of the park. Uh, Cristiano didn't have his best game playing as a center forward. Neither did Dybala either, uh, frankly. So Saudi's got a, got a whole bunch of things to tweak between now and, uh, and Thursday. I think this is going to be a close-fought game. Gav Marcotti, thank you very much. Uh, more on Gav for the team looking ahead to that cup final on the latest edition of the Serials and Podcast, which drops on Tuesday. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.